It's ally for you, the high yield savings account portion. So I've identified here some pros and cons that I'm sure are gonna help you make a better decision for yourself. One thing I'm gonna mention here is that ally does offer these things called vaults and People love these, by the way. Somebody asked on Reddit a few months ago saying, hey, should I use Ally? One of the advantages of neobanks nowadays is the fact that generally speaking, they can offer higher interest rates when it comes to savings. And if you're watching this video, most likely you are considering Ally as one of the organizations, one of the lucky organizations to handle your hard earned income. And when I first heard of Ally Bank, Ally Bank was offering approximately 3.5 percent and at the time this was unheard of it was one of the the highest if not the highest interest rate this was in 2009 and i was very ecstatic about signing up for ally and i used it for quite a few years so in this video we're gonna go over a full review on ally high yield savings account whether or not it's a good organization for you we're gonna go over the pros cons and of course best features all right, so before we go into all the facts, I first wanna ask you a few questions. If this is the first time you are being introduced to high yield savings account, it's a high yield savings account for you. Like, how do you know it's actually for you? Well, there's a few reasons that I've identified here as an engineer and somebody that's been using high yield savings account. If you wanna save more money with higher interest, if you want flexible access to your money, if you want inflation protection, if you want an emergency fund, a safe place to keep your hard earned income for an emergency, or maybe you're just simply saving for a house. One day, maybe we be able to afford a house as millennials. <laughs> I know that I'm working towards that. It's just a matter of time, but man, like the housing market is tough. Also, uh, maybe you're saving for a vacation or maybe for a car. You know, recently my wife and I just bought a 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander, which we love, by the way. I don't know if you have a family. If you have a family, let me know in the comments what, what kind of cars you're into, like a nice SUV or minivan, whatever you're into. When you have a family, you simply just want a little bit more room in the back seat when you are taking care of the child so it's just a game changer for us to have a bigger car this is a picture for it this is our first family car and we're very very excited to have it so with that being said we're gonna go over a few requirements and features that i personally identified as an engineer and as someone who likes to set targets and requirements because it's very confusing when you are looking or evaluating organizations but you don't know what you're looking for, right? Like you see all these people making videos and you're looking at interest rates and you're looking at maintenance fees, but in reality, it's not all about the interest rate. It's not all about just like maybe the charging maintenance fees. So there's a few parameters that I personally developed, again, with my background in engineering that can help us set targets and that can help us let us know what to look for when we are looking for high yield savings accounts. So this is my personal high yield savings account checklist and I encourage you to screenshot it, steal it, share it with a friend so that way you all can make better decisions for yourselves. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at high competitive APY for a long period of time. That's because you simply just don't wanna sign up with someone that you are that shows you high interest rate because they may just drop the interest a few, a few days after you sign up with them. So you definitely don't want that to happen. You, of course, you're looking for an organization that, it, that offers zero monthly fees and minimum deposit. Trust me, I just made a video a few days ago on organizations that not only make you have a minimum deposit, not only make you have a minimum balance every month, but they, on top of that, they charge you maintenance fees and they give you a terrible interest rate. So you definitely don't want to consider those for a savings account. Of course, you also want an account or a bank that offers easy access that is FDIC insured of at least $250,000. Also, the number of withdrawals allowed per month, at least six is the standard. Also, a good interface, human customer service. You wanna to talk to someone when you have a problem. No funny footnotes of hidden or hidden requirements, but at the end of the day, that warm and fuzzy feeling of confidence, comfort, trust, and familiarity with an organization. So with that being said, here is the best features of Li Bank. And nowadays we are looking at a current APY of 4.25%. And I was honestly taking a little bit aback by this somewhat when it comes to that world of high yield savings accounts, 4.25 is a little bit on the low end. It's still much higher than Bank of America, Wells Fargo, or other more popular per se 
brick and mortar stores. It's one of those things that just varies depending on what the Federal Reserve is doing with the interest rates. And if they keep increasing the interest rates, which would be terrible for people who are looking to buy a house or that are trying to borrow money. But when it comes to high yield savings accounts, the more the interest rate is raised by the Federal Reserve, then generally speaking, it's a good thing for savings accounts as we have found out so far. When I first signed up with Marcus by Goldman Sachs back in 2021, the interest rate for high yield savings accounts at the time was around the 1.1% and Marcus was offering one of the highest APYs at the time. So of course, things have changed dramatically since then and now it's almost five times higher than what it used to be a couple of years ago. So needless to say, now it's a great time to start using these high yield savings accounts. The only thing that I foresee changing the most is the APY and maybe an account bonus. That That's the next point here, which is the account bonus that at this time, Ally does not offer a account bonus for opening a high yield savings account. Sometimes what these companies do is they offer a closed offer to some of the customers to send them an email or to tell them, hey, if you refer a customer, we're gonna give you a bonus. But right now, none of that is happening. At least I haven't found it. And if you are someone that banks with Ally and you are aware of these bonuses, please let us know in the comments and that way we can all learn from your wisdom. But the next thing that we're gonna be taking a look at here is the FDIC insurance. Ally is insured up to $250,000. Now, $250,000 is the benchmark, I wanna say. There are some organizations out there, and this may be for you if you're looking for a much higher FDIC insurance, that take this number all the way to two million, like it is the case with SoFi. Wallfront offers it up to eight million, and there is one bank out there, UFB Direct, that offers FDIC insurance on just hyper steroids, right? Like they go all the way up to 225 million. That's just outrageously ridiculous. So, but if you have that much money and you want to use high yield savings accounts, then go ahead and take a look at those organizations as well and see if they fit your needs. But if we're being honest, most people watching this video would be okay with 250K per account per user. I know that I personally would be okay with that. Now, the last couple of things to take into account here are the minimum deposit and the maintenance fees. This is already, I like to say, the standard when it comes to high yield savings accounts. Zero minimum deposit, zero maintenance fees. There are a few select banks that offer a fee for these two parameters, but most of them out there are zero and LI is consistent and competitive from that perspective. Now, the next thing that we're gonna compare here is the account access. How can you access your money? How can you look into your account? So the best way that I've seen is obviously online, right? Like that's like very standard. Now, Ally offers a good feature if, because they offer a variety of services, not just savings accounts, they also offer checking accounts and they do credit cards and loans and like all this other stuff. So if you do happen to open a checking account with Ally, maybe you are someone that not only wants a savings account, maybe you are also considering, hey, you know, I'm looking for a new home. I'm looking for a place to park my, my money, get a good return on my savings, but also I'm looking for a checking account. Maybe you're also looking for credit cards. If you wanna go to a hub per se, then Ally offers checking accounts and you can get an ATM card through your checking that you can then use to access your high yield savings accounts. Let's say you wanna take out $100 from your savings account, then you transfer $100 to your check-in and then you can access your check-in through the ATM. So that would be the best and fastest way to access your money right away. Of course, there are daily limits with ATMs. So I suggest you look into those a little bit further if you are interested in this strategy. Also, when it comes to making deposits, Ally makes it very simple, very easy. They offer the standard bank transfer, direct deposit. Wire transfer, one thing that we need to know there is that wire transfers, if it comes out of your account, then they charge you a fee. There's generally speaking a fee with any organization. I've seen, I haven't seen an organization that waives this fee for wire transfers, but that's really not that common anyways. I used to deal with wire transfers a lot when I was a supervisor at DD Bank a long time ago. But when it comes to wire transfers coming in, then there's no fee whatsoever. 
Ally also allows you to mail checks, also make mobile deposits, and unlike some other organizations out there, they don't allow you to make cash deposits through the ATM. So if this is something that you are wondering, then the answer is no, they don't allow that. Okay, so now if you're wondering, all right, so that's great. So I can access my money, I can take, put money in, take money out. So if I make a withdrawal or a transfer, to another institution, how long does it take? Or if I'm, if I'm transferring from a credit union to Ally, how long does it usually take for a withdrawal or a deposit from a third party organization? So it's two, one or three business days to another institution. One to three business days is what I've seen with most other organizations. And this is a very conservative number. Sometimes it takes a couple of hours depending on which it's a business day or if it's within business hours. But one to three business days is a general ballpark that is very much standard with many organizations out there. Now, when it comes to all-in-one, as I mentioned previously, yes, Ally offers multiple, a wide variety of products. They don't just go over savings accounts. They offer, also offer checking, savings, savings, credit cards, and a bunch of other stuff that you can take advantage of. Now, one thing I'm gonna mention here is that Ally does offer these things called Vault, and people love these, by the way. Ally allows you to offer multiple, quote unquote, mini accounts, like mini savings accounts within your own savings account, and you can save for a car, you can save for a house, maybe a vacation. So if you don't want to, or you're not into opening multiple savings accounts, which will require multiple savings account numbers, then you can take advantage of these vaults that Ally offers. Okay, so now when it comes to branding, like if you don't know anything about Ally, or maybe you just wanna know a little bit more about them, Ally is a well-established brand, by the way. It was established back in 2009, as I mentioned, when it first got into the market, I signed up for it. Also, it's associated with Ally Financial, which was founded in 1919, which formerly known as GMAC. And this is important because when we know a little bit more about an organization, it helps us relate a little bit more. It helps us know whether or not it's an organization for us. So if you are interested in an organization that has a long history, many recessions under its belt, so it's proven to work, it's proven that it's a little bit like solid, established. Ally Financial is one of them. Also, when it comes to number of allowed withdrawals per month, so this is as, as it is, like how many times can you access your money per month from your savings account? So Ally recently changed its threshold from six to 10. I don't know if they got a little bit of a backlash there and like maybe questions or comments, complaints from customers. It used to be six after a, a, a few months ago and I made a review on Ally, not by itself, but comparing it to other organizations a few months ago and it was six, now it's 10, which is good. I don't, I don't know why it's not unlimited. I feel like it should be unlimited because many other organizations are competitive from that perspective, but it is what it is, right? Like 10, it is what it is. And we have to be careful here with this parameter because there are some organizations out there that they, they may charge you a fee for accessing your savings account more than their allowed withdrawals per month. Or sometimes I've even seen reviews and comments from people that they lock you off your, out of your account if you access your money more than their allowed withdrawals per month. So we have to be very careful and read over the fine print and read other people's experiences, which brings me to the next couple of points here, which is the customer service being available. They do offer human customer service and the client reviews as of today. They have a 3.3 in Wallet Hub and that's almost after 3,000 reviews. Now, one thing that I always like to say here in these videos is when it comes to these reviews, Let's look at the one stars or the two stars. People go online to complain and not to praise. And here's what I mean. I was doing research and somebody asked on Reddit a few months ago saying, hey, should I use Ally? And then somebody says, hey, I feel like I'm getting mixed messages wherever I go. Some say Ally is good online banking option with a nice APY, which is, which is drawing me in. Like, I think we all can relate to what he's saying, he or she's saying here. Says, but I read over posts talking about how Ally doesn't care for its customers and the whole fraud wave. I'm not sure about what fraud wave. I'm not gonna speak on that. Uh, any input is appreciated. Okay, so let's get into this a little bit, right? This is a very, like, this is like the perfect response and something that I personally share here in this channel. So this person replies and says, look, people go online to complain. Rarely do they go online to praise any bank, business, or company out there, you will find people happy with them and people who are unhappy with them. That's just life, absolutely true. This person says, I like them. I have no issues with them. 
I also don't do shady stuff to throw red flags in my account. So don't do stupid shit with your account and have reasonable expectations and LI will likely be just fine for you. Keep in mind, you aren't stuck with one bank for the rest of your life. If you are unhappy at some point, you can certainly move on to another bank. And I absolutely love this response because it highlights just generally speaking what the online world is many times, right? Like you see all these one stars, two stars, disgruntled customers that just go out there to give their experience, to share their voice. And the people that have great experiences, like they, have, they don't have that emotional motivation to go out there and just give a five-star review. I was like, oh my God, I just love this bank, right? So that's just life. Okay, so is LI for you, the high yield savings account portion? So I've identified here some pros and cons that I'm sure are gonna help you make a better decision for yourself. So when it comes to pros, LI certainly offers competitive APY. Also not checking, they, they also have checking account available. They have no minimum deposit in the monthly fees. Now, they also offer a revocable living trust friendly. And I'm gonna spend a few seconds here on what this means. A few days ago, I had a question from a client or a viewer audience here. And that's how I see you guys as clients because you're looking at these videos like to gain information. So from a viewer, and this viewer was wondering, uh, he was looking for re revocable living trust friendly. This is the first time that I heard of this term, by the way. So I just recently learned it. And in a nutshell, if you're someone essentially that you have a lot of assets, you have a lot of money, you have your savings account, and you happen to pass away, suddenly pass, what a tragedy, at some point, then your savings account would be allocated to designated beneficiaries in your family or friends or charity, whatever you choose to do. And not all banks offer this feature. So if you are someone that is looking into this, then maybe LI could be a good organization for you. Also, another pro from LI is the savings buckets. As I mentioned, multiple accounts within one savings account number. The FDIC insurance of the 250K per account per user. And personally, when I used LI, I have never had any problems myself. Now, of course, there's always negatives with any organization out there. No organization is perfect. They offer no bonus for now. So if you're someone that is interested in, hey, I'm trying to take advantage of a new relationship with an organization, uh, they don't offer that at this moment. Also, no branches, they're fully online. So this could be a benefit or a disadvantage depending on what you're looking for. Also, they have withdrawal limits of 10. Now, as I mentioned, there are multiple competitors out there that do offer multiple or unlimited withdrawals per month. Now, one thing that I'm gonna say here is also to keep it kind of like overall, the, they do have a competitive APY, but it's fair to say that, and this brings me to my last point, is they, they, they don't offer the highest, right? And that's something to keep in mind. So would I use it again? Would I use Ally again? Well, if I'm looking for competitive APY, maybe not the highest, right? Maybe I just want something that is good. It's not all about the interest. I mentioned this in my one of my previous videos and say, hey, like I was talking to a friend who started banking with Discover nowadays. Now Discover is one of those banks right now that is not offering one of the highest, the highest APY, but he didn't care because it was just convenient for him. He had already a relationship with Discover and he liked them, he had their credit cards. So for him, it was just a no brainer, right? Like, okay, this is still much higher than my regular credit union, but I don't want to deal with another organization. So if you are looking for a competitive APY, you are looking for savings buckets, maybe you are looking for a revocable trust. Also, they have no hidden fees. It's also an established organization. And if you're looking especially for a banking hub, like for checking savings, maybe you want a credit card and you want to have everything under one umbrella, then Ally, of course, could be a great option in this scenario. But if you are someone that is looking or if I were looking for the highest, no questions asked, APY available, also, if I'm looking for physical branches, if I'm looking to make more than 10 withdrawals per month, or if I'm looking for a fat cash bonus, then maybe, just maybe, Ally would not be a great fit in that, from that perspective. Let me know in the comments whether or not Ally is for you. And what do you like the most? What other organizations are you considering? Thank you for being here. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Salute.